we are also responsible for what we have done to ourselves, Mr. Bakshi. Absolutely. You know, I think I think um, to allow the governments to enforce such strict, stringent measures on the whole world, and when the fatality rate was one percent, to shut down one hundred percent of the world for a one yeah. percent fatality rate was un is in, inexcusable. You know. Absolutely, absolutely. Give me a couple of minutes. I will be sharing it with various. Uh, places around the world on the Facebook Live. Here is Global HR Forum of Singapore. Here is. Sorry, let, me, <laughs> let me go and keep sharing with. Yes. Indian living in Thailand. Oh, let me put my phone on silent. Yeah, people not... still remember your Thailand uh, event, you know. That was a dance. Mr. Bakshi, you have to do my, you have to do one of my uh, empowerment workshops, which I've done. I do for Fiki Flow, Y Flow, EO, I co know, corporates, I, I, you know, I, I, those, those I, are the I, ones you should now be attending and uh, doing because those are, those are meaningful today, especially with COVID and mental illness and mental stress and anxiety and all of that. Those, these things are the need of the hour today. Absolutely, we'll work out that. Let this COVID, I mean, COVID is not going anywhere. There'll be another one, then there'll be Omicron, then there'll be Omicron's sister, then there'll oh be Omicron's God. nephew, then there'll be. <laughs> oh my God, please don't say that. We, of course, we, we it'll come. come. They want to make money. No, they will give you shots. How will they give you shots if you're not scared? <laughs> if you're not scared, how will you take the shot? You how will they right. make their billions? How will, how will they vaccinate you? Are, you? you are right. This is, this is an industry which is making us to live like this in life now. No yeah, doubt. And the and the and the efficacy of the two vaccine doses you all have had has come to an end. Now what? It lasts only a certain point of time, no? So no forever immunity with the vaccine. So now you're coming to the end. Now what? You get more vaccinations, double vaccination, booster shot, triple booster, four times booster. Yeah. <laughs> this is the only way of life. You're right. And in fact, you know, you got COVID very recently. Just yeah, about a month and, and a half ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I saw you on the Twitter, and I wish you. <laughs> I said, what is going on? Puja's going on. <laughs> Zinda Dil, Puja, Puja, baby, Zinda Dil. I remember <laughs> our time spent in Bangkok and Dubai. Wow. That was so much fun, though. That was so lovely. Yeah. I loved that whole trip. It was so so lovely. Yeah. Yeah, we will organize Bangkok. We'll be able to organize once. And we will certainly be organizing. I'm sharing with various global groups around the world. Okay. You know, I am now globally well known. Pooja ji. <laughs> I, I don't believe that you're just recently globally well known. I think you've always been globally well known. Maybe you just realized it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. you're, right. you're right. Absolutely. <laughs> So another group in Africa, we have Women Power Group. We have 23 chapters around the world now. What? 23 chapters? 23 chapters of hashtag Women Power around the world. That's very cool. Yeah, very big, yes. First is Kiran Be ma'am. Kiran Bedi was the first yes, one. You were saying, saying, yes. Sister Shivani and... Uh, uh, in fact, I will be inviting you to Delhi... Seventh uh, of March, you know, eighth March is the International Women Day. So seventh yes. March, we are doing a big event in Delhi India Habitat Center. Okay. And uh, I'll be inviting you there as um, you know as a panelist. Again, it will be a paid one. So Kiran, ma'am, and hopefully Simriti Irani is also joining. Oh, okay. Yes, I was mentioning things so that you can block your calendar today, right, Ravi, ma'am? <laughs> <laughs> let's do it closer to the date. Let's get yeah. in. Let's get into the new year. I've got lots of things happening this coming yeah. year. But it's going and to be fun. Will, All of it is going to be fun, and I'll always make have, time. We will have anything uh, paid. I'm like very ready to do it. Anything I know free, that. I'm like, please give me time. <laughs> <laughs> Any paid, I'm like, yes, it keeps my office running. It keeps my yeah, Everybody wants very free things all the time. Yeah, ye charity ke liye hai, ye charity ke liye. Event aadmi char charity kar hai, wo free me kar hai, nahi. Sound wala charity kar hai, free me kar hai, nahi. Acha, backdrop wala free me kar hai, nahi. To fir celebrity kyu free me kar hai? <laughs> I mean, what is it? Everyone is charging money. And only the celebrities made to feel guilty about the fact that they ask for money. 
Yeah, but Pooja, you know, uh, in my and we event, can take the money and give it to the charity of our choice. I mean, we do charity. It's not like we we only take and take and take. We give back so much, you know. So I know, I know. In fact, I am thankful to the Bollywood. We did this one hundred seventy-five thousand dollar we picked up from through Bollywood Anupam Kher Foundation, uh, Pallavi Joshi, Vivek Agnihotri. I am with them next week here in uh, New York. We are launching that Kashmir Files. Movie, na you know, I Vivek know. and Palavi. That's a big one. Nice. Yeah, Achha, when are we starting? It's it's uh it's five thirty. Yeah, yeah. But next one minute, I am just giving it to another group, and uh, then. Uh, yes, this is the last one, and. Yes. I've got a farewell party for my staff this evening. Very sweet uh, person. My graphics designers are leaving us. We're having a nice big farewell for him. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here are we go. We, are we ready? Yeah. Ready. Fantastic. Yeah. Good morning in USA, Canada. Good afternoon, England, Europe, Africa. Good evening, Asia. India, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Sri Lanka, Afghanistan, because that's closer to my heart. Those women are still in a lot of trouble. Some of them have gone to various countries. And late good evening in Australia. Welcome to this weekly Saturday series, hashtag women power, a global moment. Started in April, 2020. The first women power on the show, Her Excellency Dr. Kiran Bedi, my profound sister with whom I work on leadership programs, followed by many celebrities. But today is a day which is very special. Today is the last program of year 2021. We are walking into 2022 with full vigor, with full vitality with full enthusiasm and I have with me and it's my honor and proud privilege to welcome this evening a great profound guest of honor Bollywood actress and many stuff around her I call her women of elegance women of substance women of excellence I will say the pride of India to this Women Power Global Moment show, wherein we missioned in April 2020, along with Kiran Bedi, that on this platform, we'll have 100,000 women by year 2021. We have crossed around 700,000. And by 2024, we will have 1 million women on this platform, irrespective of caste, creed, nationality, religion, and the color. In this process of not a single Saturday lost, irrespective of COVID one wave, COVID two waves, we kept continuing this around the world in 23 chapters. And in this process, I have been titled as Honorable Woman, supporting the cause of the great women power. My mom has the greatest women power. Kiran Bedi has the greatest women power. My sisters has the greatest women power. My wife has the greatest women power. I don't have a daughter. My all colleagues in Thailand, Canada, India, and wherever I have worked in 20 countries, the biggest women power. So it is oh. my, I'm so excited because I have been talking to Pooja for the last one year to come on my show, but she has been busy back to back. She did a lot of work in COVID. And finally, I told her, I said, Pooja, you cannot miss this. This is my last program of 2021. You have got to be there. And I can be, I can be very, I mean, I know Pooja because we did shows in Bangkok, we did shows in Dubai. She is a dynamic, versatile, a great human being. 
Pooja ji, welcome to this show. Thank you, Mr. Bakshi, and thank you for saying I'm the last because they all, as they say, save the best for last. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and warm welcome to you too, Mr. Bakshi. I mean, you know, thank you for the warm welcome to everybody in all the different chapters uh, that are currently watching this particular program. Uh, I'm sure that you worked very hard to get to where you have gotten today, to get this platform to where it has gotten today, to get the support and love and encouragement that you do receive today. And uh, thank you for always looking to strengthen the cause of women. I think that's very special, uh, very needed. And I think most importantly, um, it shows great respect and value for, you know, a, half the planet, um, you know, that is nurturing, compassionate, giving, uh, and marginalized also in many ways. Fantastic. Hey, ladies and gentlemen around the world who's watching this now or who will be going to watch it later on, let me quickly talk about who is Pooja Bedi? Everybody knows, but it's my honor to really talk about an actor, award-winning relationship columnist, award-winning talk show. You can, today she is the founder of Happy Soul, a health and wellness wonderland. She's a partner in Magicians of Wellness India. She's a director of Merchant of Wellness. Pooja was born to two strong celebrity parents. And I have the greatest respect for Kabir Bedi Saab. What a dynamic, what a versatile, what a, I mean, uh, as a man, I get, you know, attracted to that person. That is the power of Kiran Bedi. And her Kabir mother, Bedi. Uh, sorry, uh, Kabir Bedi. <laughs> and, and mother, Gauri. Pratima. Yeah, uh, Pratima Gauri, because she changed the name later, I understand, is it? Yeah, she changed the name because she said that, you know, when we're born, we're born yeah. with our father's surname and we get married, oh. we take on our husband's surname. Why are we always an extension of a man? Why can't I have my own identity? And ah. so she changed the name to Pratima Gauri. And she said, you know, ah. the embodiment of the goddess and I'd like to have my own identity. Thank you very much. Wow. So in a career spanning over three decades from TV, films, you know, Jo Jita Wahi Skander, Phir Teri Kahani Yaad Aaye, Lutere, Attack Hi, Aatank, Advertising, Talk Shows, Reality Shows, Print and Digital Media, and Wellness Attitude and All. That's what she's saying, get me to Bangkok, I will talk about wellness. <laughs> she represents a woman who seeks to change and take from strength to strength, not just herself, but the world around. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an opportunity for you to understand how she slogged and struggled. She also faced a lot of problems in life, but then how she could come out and remained that versatile and dynamic always. As a wellness entrepreneur, she began her journey with a series of Happy Soul, personal and professional empowerment workshops, an amalgamation of her 18 years of study and science and meta sciences. These workshops have also been conducted at Piki FLO, CEO entrepreneur organization, multiple women groups, social work groups, colleges, as well as at the Global Entrepreneur Leadership Summit 2019 in Bali, where her topic was mental, emotional, physical health, and power of manifestation. I mean, she is exactly like me in the human resources. That's what she is doing. So there is going to be a lot of work to be done, Pooja, with you. I can assure you on that. Pooja has been awarded multiple times for her Avatars, be it for an individual contribution, as a professional and humanitarian. She is a diploma holder in a CHII on modalities for behavior resolutions, health resolutions, spiritual hypnosis, clinical hypnotherapy, as well as certifications in NLP. My God, you've done NLP also. Yes. Uh, Mr. Bakshi, just, just, just for your information, the recording has been stopped. So in case you're not aware, uh, it just said the recording is stopped. Oh. Uh, uh, Amresh, please have a look. Amresh, are you there? Okay, now it's back in progress. Okay. Her, certifications, that, so need not to worry. her certifications include meta sinuses, Karuna Reiki, Usi Reiki, Magnified Healing, Heal Your Life. My God, a founder of Happy Soul. I can go on and go on, but I need to stop somewhere because we need to have a discussions of what she has done over her life. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on Zoom, we are on YouTube, we are on global television, and we are on Facebook. All of you, please park your questions at the end of the 
my and Niti's uh, session, we will take some questions from the audience because we will be certainly looking for getting you involved in the process. And in the meanwhile, I can see people from already joined. Oh, Manisha Bose from Thailand already joined. Very good energy, Mr. Bakshi. Oh, you have any doubt about DK Bakshi, Manisha Bose? <laughs> <laughs> Uday Gil sahab, wow. Ah, great to see you, Uday Gil sahab. Fantastic. And oh, we got, uh, okay, Varsha already there. Varsha is another women power of global talent. Oh, Suman Cole already there. Oh, Owen Cole sahab already there. And we got people already joining. <laughs> I can see Harsh from Durban already there. Ajay Chaudhary from Germany already there. Wow, sounds great. Pooja ji, though I know you, and now here I need to get your first question. You are a well-known star. You have been a very independent personality known as women of substance, women of elegance. I would be very keen to know about your upbringing as a daughter of a very dynamic, versatile actor, famous in three continents, Kabir Bedi Sahab. I salute him. And your mom, Pratima Gauri. I'm keen to know about your respected parents who brought such a great woman to this world. Did you face any issues of being a girl child? How was the environment at that time in the school? Can you take us through your journey of your child growing to be such a dynamic puja baby? Would be keen to know about it. And did you dream what you are doing <laughs> now? Can you throw some light? It's a big question, okay? <laughs> it's a long question. I think there are many questions, question. Mr. Bakshi, and one question. Yeah. Um, let's just say, firstly, you know, uh, as far as women and women's rights go, and we're talking about, uh, you know, growing up as a girl child, clearly, because that was an issue, at, uh, you know, and still is an issue in our country. Um, it's interesting that this year, for the first time, the number of women have outnumbered the number of men in this country for the first time this year. And I think that's a huge step forward uh, from where we were to where we are today. Uh, I think a lot of that has to do with economic independence. A lot of that has to be with the education that's been uh, mandatorily almost uh, put across in villages uh, for the girl child, incentives that have been given for the girl child to go to school, etc. cetera. Uh, in the time that I was growing up, Mr. Bakshi, um, I grew up with very, very open and bohemian parents. So I grew up in an environment uh, which never discriminated, obviously, uh, between a woman and a man or a girl child and a boy child ever. Um, in fact, uh, I was just told to follow my dreams. Uh, like, um, you know, if I wanted to cook, I was able to cook. If I wanted to climb a tree, I climbed a tree. Um, you know, if I, if I wanted to go down and play, um, you know, hockey and gilly danda, I was entitled to do that. In school, I was, uh, you know, a class topper. I was in my basketball team, debating team, uh, hockey team, swimming team, acting uh, theater group. Um, you know, we, I, you know, in arts and crafts, like stitching and cross stitch and needlework. Um, you know, so I've, you know, I've always been taught to embrace my femininity. It is not a weakness, it is an asset to be a woman. Um, and I think that has been very uh, clearly dinned in, uh, not just through the way that my parents have allowed me to live my life, but by the way they have led their lives and the way my grandmother has led her life. So it has come down the generations of women empowering women to take those journeys forward and also to reach out and help other women uh, across societies and across you know, their communities to do the same. Um, you know. Um, I was in a boarding school, as I said, and it was a very, you know, you talk about, oh, you have Kabir Bedi and Pratima Bedi and the glamour, et cetera, et cetera. You know, the fact is, I, my parents were divorced when I was five years old, you know, so I grew up with a single mother. Uh, I grew up in two separate worlds, um, you know, where uh, my mother would yell at me for wasting this much of ketchup. I was sent to a boarding school, a military boarding school, Lawrence School, Sanawa, that was ridiculously strict with all of us, uh, you know, and, and rightfully so. It's made, chipped me to be this amazing, strong person that I am today. There were 100 girls in the dormitory, bed locker, bed locker, bed locker, bed locker. We had three baths a week. Two times a week was a body bath of three minutes, and once a week was a head bath allowed for five minutes, and the curtain was thrown open and get out, you know. Um, so uh, our food was not too great at that point. Now they've improved their quality a lot. Back then we had biscuits called salties and doggies, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, we were hiking, camping, roughing it out, um, you know, getting training in guns, you know. It was it was a hardcore military school. We'd march in squads, there was rousers to wake us, there was uh, detention and drill. Um, um, 
you know, so I grew up very rough and tough. Uh, you know, I grew up with a solid sense of grounding of what reality was. Uh, you know, we we were um, constantly exposed to my mother and her dance to villages. It's not like we had first class travel all the time because maybe a part of my father's life was glamorous. But my mother, for example, a classical artist back in those days, um, you know, they traveled by second class train. So there'd be uh, Zakhar Hussain, uh, Hari Prasad Charasya, um, you know, my mother and various other greats uh, traveling by second class trains going to these festivals in like Konarak or you know down south and and um, you know the trains would stop in those days on the roads in, in the middle of the tracks and um, they would just get off for two hours the trains would just not do anything you know those were the days <laughs> so they'd get down they'd perform on the tracks and they'd be having fun then the whistle would go okay train is going they'd get back on the train stay in little guest houses so I've had a very varied uh, life and upbringing. There is nothing about my world that was glossy and glamorous apart from what people chose to see. Yes, you know, celebrityhood is a glamorous world because we're larger than life on celluloid. But the reality of what it takes to be a celebrity, it's just solid, hard work. You know, Absolutely. people don't see that. You know, they just see the success and say, oh, they're so... And that attitude comes, you know, and you're like, do you know how hard we work? Do you know how many hours we put in? How much mental stress, emotional stress, anxiety, the insecurity of the profession? Most importantly, yeah. you don't know when your next job will come. You know, you're not in a corporate job with a salary, you know, and it's all based on courage, on belief, on manifestation, um, you know, and all of that. So, um, uh, so, you know, so for me, um, you know, I've kind of had my mother, my grandmother as these role models. I've had, I've looked up to, say, Oprah Winfrey. I've looked up to Angelina Jolie, you know, and while growing up, I've had these very strong women as my role models of leading my life on my own terms, because I'm entitled to do that. We, are, we grew up in a democracy, fortunately, you know, and I exercise every aspect of my democratic rights, you know, and I helped others do so as well. Uh, we are very fortunate to be in, in, in such a wonderful, great democracy. And, and uh, you know, I, I use that because that is the greatest privilege that we do enjoy today, um, you know, and, and I wouldn't let that be taken away for anything. Beautiful. You are, you talk beautiful, as beautiful you are, Pooja. <laughs> we, have not, so we, have not, we have not met last, I think, 15, 16 years, but you are the same. Yesterday when, uh, not yesterday, for me it was yesterday. Today when you were with uh, Goa police and I saw you, such a slim trim. I said, oh my God, Pooja <laughs> is the more smarter, more trim and more slim. And the way you have taken your life forward has been amazingly beautiful. Yeah. Especially that was a wonderful venture, actually, by the Goa Police. It was a women empowerment squad that they launched yesterday. And yeah. it was the first uh, women empowerment you know, squad on that level, be a part of the police force now with special cars, they've got special things that record their movements, they've got guns, you know, and they're trained to be wherever a distress call comes within five minutes. It's a wonderful initiative by uh, the Chief Minister of Goa, Mr. Sawant. And, you know, it's really wonderful to see people taking women, women's safety seriously. I think it's uh, it's very heartening to see the efforts being made and to see the excitement in the police force, you know, that there's these women police you know, pink force written on their t-shirts and it was really lovely to launch that and flag it off. Um, it, was, it was very special. Fantastic. In fact, on this show, Kiran Bedi is our first IPS officer and you uh, must know in April 2020 when we were doing the first show, she said, uh, but she's up, take it to the global level. And that's where we started. Hashtag women power, a global moment to 23 countries around the world. We got many people more joining. Sine from Mississauga, Toronto already there. Honey from Cape Town is already joined us. Oh my God. Oh, we got Nisha Sharma already with us. Fantastic. Uh, Niti. Yes, yeah, sir. Over to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> My pleasure, sir. Thank you, Pooja, ma'am. So I have a question now. I would like to know, Kabir Sahib's personality has uh, has been a very, a very enlightening man. So we call, everyone call as a, as a handsome dude. So who is that charm would, can be seen one of the dynamic personalities around. So how do you feel about him? Can you share some light on the persona of Kabir Sahib and impact of his personality on you? 
Well, uh, <laughs> I think I'm a great mix of both my parents, uh, even physically. I have my mother's big eyes. I have the color of my father's eyes. You know, I have the color of my father's skin, and yet I have my mother's lips. You know, um, I have I have my father's hair. Oh no! <laughs> Thank God I don't have his beard. <laughs> <laughs> and um you know i um i'm daddy's girl you know i love my daddy and you know there's no good place me to go and hug him and kiss him and feel his big arms wrap around me say my darling and kiss kiss and it just feels like the whole world is fine no matter what is going on around me you know and um yeah i just absolutely love and adore my dad and um you know he's had he's had a his own journey which is told in his book uh, stories i must tell which he released oh. um which is released um in india in many languages it's released in italy wow. it's released in hungarian it's um it's a bestseller it's a national bestseller right now the stories i must tell is just released a couple of months ago uh, the story of his entire life and you you see his journey as human you see his journey uh, from um, from childhood you know in refugee tents and camps and you know not having silky socks to wear to school to you know um, uh, his mother who then went into satyagrahas and uh, went on to um, you know uh, went into monasteries and you know donned the buddhist robes and took on that journey and um, you know his journey from strength to strength and how he took his journey um, you know the hardships that he faced we all do right so um, you know it's a very interesting journey of how somebody would take their lives from strength to strength as we all can um, it's just a question of how we choose to adapt to our circumstances what we choose for our lives and how much we want it and go after it um, in every possible way so my dad's journey has been really no different i would say from any others except that he's shaped his so beautifully you know and he is very handsome and he has a wonderful voice and i have women coming up to me all the time saying oh, your father oh. his voice you know so handsome i've had italian women coming to me saying i want to have your father's child and i'd be like i don't think he's saying that to me <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know um it's just i mean it's it you know and he's lived a life that was very frugal he's also had a life that's been very very um, abundant uh, yeah. so he's had you know uh, times when he stayed in tents and now he's had times he's you know stayed at seven star hotels in beverly hills and you know had that as his world as well he's traveled many journeys and many experiences and many forms yeah. of um, you know uh, life i would say um so um every journey is a strength from strength to strength and he has taken his accordingly my mother has had her journeys uh, yeah. you know and i grew up as a product of both my parents so one hand i would be able to go and see beverly hills and see uh, you know um champagne glasses which are super expensive and and deal with five star hotels and you know the glamour part that be with my mother and we'd be like watching how much ketchup we eat and she's cutting up her clothes to make our clothes you know um you know and uh, so i've i've seen two very different worlds as well um you know and it's been very interesting to see those journeys and to value each one of them because each one is correct and each one is relevant and each one is important and each one is deserved you know and each one was of their choosing so you know and um, you know so but as a as a daughter to such parents and vibrant intelligent articulate emotional uh, rational um yeah. uh, decent and filled with integrity whatever they did they did with a great sense of purpose and integrity you know they wow. did it because it was right and they didn't care whether people damned them for it or slammed them for it you know mm-hmm. or 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 they just rose up against the tide over and over and over again and they stood up for what was right not for what everyone did you know and um i think that really shaped them it shaped us uh, it taught us to stand up for ourselves it taught us about dignity integrity um uh, loyalty um and and also to want a better society and a better world for all of us you know so um so yeah I, it's been an interesting journey <laughs> yes, 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 that by your body language your expressions and everything <laughs> amazing amazing <laughs> well, i am an ardent fan of uh, kabir sahab and may i request and i am taking this opportunity while i am live you know i have hashtag #new dna of leadership people like Uh, anupam khair many bollywood stars have come on my show army generals police generals i would request him to be on my show whenever it's possible please connect me your dad you know tell him there's someone who loves and respects him for what he is his voice his aura his personality his persona 
it, his walking style, fantastic. <laughs> well, so you, should people, you should just interview him on his book because he could share his whole life along yeah. with the book because his yeah. book is so incredible. You can ask him about all the chapters, yeah, and uh, open up all these, uh, you know, people to his life and his journey. It's, it's amazing. I can, I can. One is Niti, please arrange before I land in India, please arrange <laughs> yeah. get this book in hand so that I can read it and I will connect through Pooja to Kabir Sahib. And I don't know if Kabir Sahib is not Kabir Sahib. I want to tell you, you know, from the first time, Kabir Sahib, Kabir Bedi is not Kabir Sahib. You know, he is that persona. He is a king. He is a king. So please connect me to him. I can yes, keep him on the book. Absolutely. Okay, done. All right. Done. Okay. Okay, fantastic. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are enjoying the beauty of Pooja Bedi. <laughs> The way she is sharing her journey of excellence and how she has been shaped. And she shared about she is combination of both Kabir Sahab and Pratima Gauri. Wow. Let me go to the next question, Pooja Ji. Pooja, let me now go to your professional pursuits. When you worked with Joe Jita, Vahi Skander, and Phir Teri Kahani Yadai, Lutere. I watched this Lutere and Phir Teri Kahani Yadai. And attack he atan. But then finally, you also took stage by storm through your Latin American ballroom dance. You remember one you did in Bangkok also, along with your oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. you are an absolute impacting personality. When did you really got to know about yourself? You realize that I have this in me. So you went to movies, you went to this dance, and then I will talk about other aspects. So was it a planned one or you kept on flowing with uh, what came to your life? You know, Mr. Bakshi, we are not, uh, we are constantly evolving. We are not the same people we were in our teens or our twenties or our thirties or our forties. I'm today 51 years old. And for me, well, you it's- don't um, look like, You don't oh. look like. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So, um, um, yeah, so, um, you know, so, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we're not the same people we were a decade ago or a decade prior or a decade prior. We are always growing. We're constantly evolving. We're constantly learning. We're constantly growing and shaping ourselves, shaping our consciousness, right? So, you know, the uh, people who look at me and they remember my sexy avatar, my actor image, and they look at the whole uh, glamour aspect and they see that Pooja Bedi is that. Then there are people who look at me and there are a large section of women look at me and they see the mother, the doting mother, the single parent, you know, um, somebody who's lived life on her own terms. Somebody sees me for my women empowerment and my standing up even for men's empowerment. And somebody sees me as this, you know, this, this, this rebel of society. There are some people who see me more in a business angle. You know, oh, she's like, you know, uh, into this, uh, you know, wellness industry today. And she's this rising hotshot entrepreneur. And there are people who see me now in that aspect. I say I am. It's the story of the elephant and the blind men. Wow. You know, when one touches the trunk of the elephant and says it's a snake, one touches the tail of the elephant and says it's a rope, one touches the side of the elephant and says it's a wall, one touches the leg of the elephant and says it's a tree trunk. It's an elephant, but people see of it what they choose to see of it. Right. So I always say I am the elephant. People can choose to see different aspects of me. That's their limited vision or version of me. Very right. I am the elephant. So that's the way I look at it. Wow, that's fascinating. Pooja, my next question. When you moved from films to shows around the world at events, award ceremonies, you started hosting like not just Page 3, also being brand ambassador of Allegran India, Kaya Silk Clinic, Conti Club, as well as stage actors in box offices, Carry On Papa. You know this, wow, what a girl, a Bengali Jatra. Now, how did you, you know, move? As you rightly said, we kept evolving. How did you move towards this aspect of your journey? How did it um, happen? You know, um, Mr. Bakshi, you know, as in India, we're brought up to believe that Bade hoke engineer bano, doctor bano, yeah. you know, ye karo, wo karo. And it's our parents that limit our vision and our dreams because you know, somebody wants you to become something either because they are that or because they never get a chance to be that. So now they want you to be that. Right. And your parents right. are shaping your journey almost like they're telling you what to do because they've given birth to you and you have an obligation now to live up to their expectations. 
which yeah. is i think absolutely unfair because every child comes into this world with their destiny and their dreams and it is every parent's responsibility to encourage them to reach their full potential we are all souls that have come onto this planet right human being society jobs these are not created by god these are all man made experiences and we are the ones subjecting human beings to this over and over and over again with a limited myopic view when all Absolutely. we have to do is set people free to live their dreams before it was unheard of that children were allowed to just be musicians or be artists so you know it was like pagal ho gaya kya paisa kaisa kamayega you know how do you earn your money you know <laughs> and, you know today everything is an opportunity and everything is a business opportunity you know today people don't even need that they just need social media and they're making a fortune for themselves being influencers you know so the world has changed the nature of jobs has changed dynamics have changed so much you know but back when i when i was growing up um you know my parents never put any restrictions on what i would do you know they always told me you will always have a roof over your head and you will always have food to eat and you will be educated because that is our responsibility to you we have put you on this planet and we must get you to stand on on your own two feet what you choose to do from there how you earn your luxuries that is up to you you know we will put khana veena chadar you know home but then you want your fancy cars you want your fancy outfits you want whatever you go earn it you know so <laughs> so we grew up you know basically experimenting experiencing different things understanding what you want how can you expect somebody they are 16 18 20 or even 25 to know what they want for the rest of their life you know it's not possible chances are that they will force themselves into a career and then be in sad or depressed or monotonous so entire life doing that career which they never ever wanted to do and they're waiting for retirement to the time they can actually start enjoying all the things they would have liked to do in their lifetime right and i think that is so sad and i'm so grateful to my parents who just allowed me to express myself and to follow my path um and i think for me um the journey of entering films again was quite by accident i was a class topper in my school uh, boarding school and i was actually on my way to wall street i was in america i was studying uh, i was determined to be on wall street to the movers and shakers of the financial world and that is where i was heading i toppled into bollywood quite by accident i was never intended to be there you know i thought it was my ticket back to india because i was missing india and i thought that was a sneaky way of getting back home because i didn't like america that much to stay in i missed the ethos of india i missed you know i missed the kind of conversations and stimulations of india and so when i came back thinking i'm going to do this one just one film and my mother turned it on and said that's all very well darling but i'm going off to bangalore and you can be at home and take care of the home and the running of the home and i said but mama this is a very expensive home it has a cook and it has a dog and it has society dues to pay <laughs> you know i'm just doing the same thing no you've come back now you take charge and you take control and suddenly from doing this one film and then continue my education i had to do two films three films ad campaigns etc etc to like pay the bills because i had to be standing on my own two feet and a large part of me is not ego but more pride you know that i would not ask my parents for anything ever again so from the age of 18 onwards 18 19 i started earning my own living standing on my own two feet you know and so i will not ask them for any more money <laughs> i will do it on my own you know? ah. <laughs> so you know and and everything led one led thing led to another led to another led to another and i've just let life lead me you know um post my divorce for example you know it was um it was so uh, difficult uh, to think of coming back into the the limelight or in bollywood or anything and when i started writing my columns at that point of time um you know and that led to uh, my talk shows because they read my columns and they liked the way i thought they liked my my thought processes they thought it would be great for a talk show the talk shows happened the talk shows happened that automatically led to brand endorsements they you know were award winning the endorsements led to other reality shows you know and it just it just kept spiraling and i just took every opportunity that came my way and felt right um you know and thank you know thank god for the opportunities that did come you know and and for the courage it took to to exit a marriage and to look for a second world and a second life you know and you know and and um, so it's been an amazing journey you know and one that has taken me fortunately from strength to strength so lady 
I believe in following your intuition also, Mr. Bakshi. You know, wow. There's a large part of our intuition that we ignore because it's so filled with fears, you know, which are instilled in our mind by society. You know, divorce ban jaoge, log kya kahenge, bacho ka socho, you know, khud ka mat socho, khud gars mat bano, you know, uh, who will marry you, you'll be a divorcee, you come with baggage, you know, also back then all this was the norm and uh, which is not that today, fortunately, times have changed. But back then things were very different. Uh, you know, no alimony, no this, no that. So it's, 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 it was very, um, very, very uh, daunting, you know, to take certain steps forward. But, you know, one always just has to follow one's intuition. And as my mother said, whatever you do, give it your 100%. You know, 500%. don't do anything in half measure. One hundred percent. Give yourself to it. Immerse yourself in it. Love what you do, ah. and that's what I did. So that's that. <laughs> uh, women power. Those who are watching now, or those who will be watching later, see the women who had here her own issues, but then she fought against it. And she says, her mother said, "Give it hundred percent." You know, full-hearted efforts produce full results. Half-hearted efforts produce half results, nil results. So whatever you need to do, you need to do with complete passion, madness, which I call it romancing with your destiny. And she is the one who has actually romanced with her destiny. I would say, Pooja, go, grow, glow, no, great, okay. gratitude, good work, good health, <laughs> happiness. All G's, nine G's of Pooja Bedi. Ladies are getting excited. I can see your mom and even you are full of passion. Anshul, Mumbai chapter head is talking about. Anshul, be ready. You are there for Mumbai <laughs> chapter head. God, I mean, uh, be ready to uh, ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen, can I move forward? And I see some more people have joined. Oh, Anshul uh, has joined from uh, New Jersey here. I am in New Jersey right now. I'm 7 a.m. EST. But this program is so closer to my heart. And Pooja Bedi is one of a very powerful women power in my life as well. As I said, my colleagues, my mother, my sister, my wife, and all my colleagues who have worked in near about 20 countries with me. They have been part of my life. And I believe in case, that is the moment we are talking about, in case we respect the women, they have done a greatest thing. This is going to be a legacy around. Kiran Ma'am always says, women is quality. And I quote Kiran Ma'am, women is quality of life. Without women, there's no quality. And we all men believe certainly that women is quality. And I am a personal, you know, believer of respecting women and taking the best out of those women. Uh, Niti, you have a question. Niti. Yeah, yeah, I would love to, sir. So, Pooja, ma'am, now I come to tough part of your life, some tragedies in the family, Siddharth, and then your lovely woman, pa, mother, Gauri, ma'am. How did you manage this difficult period of your life as a woman, pa? How did you come out of that struggle, stress, and carried on yourself with that guts and gilor? Please help us to understand so that the women who face such situations can learn from your experience. Ma'am. Okay, so it wasn't just my mother and my brother. It was my entire world around me that actually collapsed in a matter of three and a half years. In three and a half years from the age of about 27 and a half to about uh, 31, 32 ish, somewhere around that time, um, I lost my grandmother, I lost my dog. Dog lovers know how devastating that can be. So I lost my grandmother. I lost my dog. There was a man who raised me from the time of six months old, my cook, who'd been with me my whole life and my father figure in so many ways. He died. So that's my right. grandmother, my dog, my father figure. Then my brother commits suicide. Then my mother dies in a landslide. Then in the middle of this, in the middle of all of this, I'm giving birth to two children and I get divorced. And I'm on my own with no alimony, no source of income coming in at the age of 32 with two beautiful little kids and looking around me and every support system that I ever had around me is gone. And apart from my father, but he wasn't in India at that time. And my mother always said, you can't stop the rain from falling, but you can always determine how you respond. Your quality of your life is not shaped by what happens to you. The quality of your life is shaped by your reaction to what happens to you. There are four words that have really stood by me through this entire time. This too shall pass. These four words. 
this too shall pass because it always does. The good times don't last and neither do the bad times, right? And that's the first thing we must remember. Another thing is that nobody is mortal on this planet. We will all die. What determines the quality of your life that you have chosen to live? Number three, the experiences that we have are our own. They are unique to us and yet they are not unique to us. Pain, suffering, tragedy is everybody's story. Everybody will experience the death of a parent. Everybody will experience heartbreak. Everybody will experience financial ups and financial downs. There is no great one smooth ride for any person on this planet, not one. And when you turn around and see that as a human journey, a necessary human journey, if you went through pain and grief and did not cry, that would be abnormal. To have no bad happen to you in your life, that would be abnormal. To not have grief and pain in your life, that would be abnormal. How you react and respond to those situations, that determines your destiny ahead of you, right? So whatever happened to me in my life, I reminded myself that it is not exclusive to me. Pain is not exclusive to anybody. How I choose to take my life from strength to strength is up to me, and I did. I decided to take one step forward every single day with a positive attitude. And I tell you, positivity, manifestation, gratitude. Most importantly, gratitude. I cried because I had no shoes till I saw a man who had no feet. Very, very important to thank the universe and to thank everything around you and to thank yourself for everything that does surround you. It could be as simple as the fact you have a mobile phone in your hand or that you're one friend or that you had food on your plate today. Everything is something to be grateful for, every single thing, that you have a bed to sleep in, that you have a police force that will take care of you. I mean, anything around you that surrounds you. There's so many reasons to be grateful. Yet all we will do is focus on the one or two things that are wrong in our lives and go on 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 about these things. And Charlie Chaplin once beautifully said in one of his things, he says, you know, he went on stage, he cracked a joke and people laughed. And he cracked the same joke and people laughed. And then he cracked the same joke and about 50% of the audience laughed. And then he cracked the same joke and 20% of the audience laughed. And then he cracked the same joke and 10 people laughed because they said, what the hell is going on? And then he turned around and said, if you can't laugh at the same joke with the same intensity over and over again, how can you go on with your pain with the same intensity over and over and over again? You know, we subject ourselves to that. Move on, move forward. Life has got so much ahead of you. We are so wrapped up in this little closeted space we go into. You know, there are oceans ahead of you. There are, there are, there's a whole planet out there filled with beauty, filled with nature, filled with experiences, food, human beings, interactions, love, emotions you know don't confine yourself to what was look forward to what is and what can be you shape your destiny you decide which step you're going in and yes you can do it the only person that stops you from doing it is you that's why in my programs that i do it's all about deprogram then reprogram and then reinvent which is the uh, most important thing only thing is you have to carry on with yes Puja, know, Puja, it's, it's Puja it's acknowledging Devi. that you have pain and you know yes. when people say how do you deal with pain and you know uh, don't you suffer I'm like of course I suffer I'd be very abnormal if I did not suffer you know mm -hmm. in fact if a tragedy happens I'm the first person to put on sad songs and sad movies and drown in sorrow because I need to express it anything that you suppress becomes toxic so if you take a ball and put it below water when you let go of the ball it jumps at a higher speed right? Like it explodes, it goes upwards. So the most important thing is to acknowledge the pain, to acknowledge the grief and to vent it, not suppress it. So I will go through every sad movie, sad song for like a, maybe a five days, six days, 10 days, depending on the gravity of the situation, two weeks. And then I'm so tired of being Amina Kumari, you know, I'm so tired of this guy. Like, Bas ho gaya. I want to get on to the business of being happy again. You know, and that's sad. it's out of my system, you know? I'm not nurturing it and holding on to it. It happened. Okay, great. I'm sorry for myself. And again, three very important words, self-love, self-worth, and self-respect. Wow. Very, very, very important, you know? Very and, important. and that is not selfish. And a lot of people think that it's very selfish to think of yourself. No, it's not. Only oh, when you your must. well is full can others drink from it. 
Absolutely. Only when you have strength can you share strength. Only when you have oceans of love inside you can you give love to other people. You know? wow. So be that person. And the only way you'll have that is if you replenish your system constantly. You are and you matter. And that is very, very important for everyone to always understand, know, realize and work upon, most importantly. Wow. That is the reason I admire Pooja Bedi. That is the reason. <laughs> The way she expresses herself. Ladies, you have heard her, how tough situation she had and how she has moved forward, taking it forward. And with the power of positivity, with the power of passion, with the power of perseverance, with the power of partnerships with the right people, with the power of performance, because she's been continuously performing, and the, with the power of pride. That is the power of Pooja Bedi. Powerful Pooja, Pooja Bedi. You got the power. I got the power. We got the power. Hey, we are all global talent. And she is globally known for what she does. Pooja, now since this was a very tough question for you, and I could see uh, you, there were emotions, but they were you were... Uh, you know, even then, after having those emotional disasters, you said, I fought with the world and my mom did this. You gave an example of challenging. Can you give two, you know, reasons for such women who go through bad phases? Uh, I mean, they have issues with their uh, partners or they have issues with their family or they have issues in their job. Two good things for them to move on in their life. Just two advices to be better. Well, two things. One is that it's not always one partner that suffers. You have to realize that one partner is suffering, so is the other partner equally suffering, right? So firstly, it's a state of victimhood that we put ourselves into. We, we consider ourselves victims, okay? Yeah. So firstly, is acknowledge the fact you're not a victim. You're in your circumstance by choice. You have chosen this. Everything in your life today is your choice. The wow. curtains that are in your home, the food that is on your table, the staff that you've employed, the husband that you chose, the children that you chose to bear, you know, yeah. these have all been your choices. So if you don't like what's around you, well, make better choices, make new choices. Right. So this whole thing of victimhood, abhi main kya karungi, main kaise karungi, are abhi, abhi to, you know, maybe, uh, you know, na kar jayegi, you know, and all this stuff. No, I'm sorry. You're, you say a lot of things to yourself to make yourself feel better about your martyrdom. I'm doing it for the sake of my children. You know, there's a very common line that women use. And I have mm. so many children when I do counseling sessions that come to me and say, we wish our parents were just divorced because we can't bear the fighting. We can't bear the, the, you know, the shouting and sometimes abuse that goes on in the house. We'd much rather see our parents happy and separate than see them in this tragic marriage or see them in these cold indifferent marriages where they're sharing separate bedrooms you know and this is not marriage and a large part of the youth today is choosing not to get married for these very reasons because yeah. they see these dysfunctional relationships called marriage which parents mm -hmm. think they're doing a service to their children but actually they're seriously scarring their children you know because of the nature of the home environment you know and and these things need to be considered because at the end of the day you have a responsibility to your children you have a responsibility to teach them that victimhood is not the answer you know, True. that to be abused or to be traumatized or to be sad, depressed and cold and, and lifeless at home is not right. the answer to a problem. That True. is not the example you want to be to tell your children how to be because they're looking up to you as role models. They're looking up to you for direction. They're looking up to you for courage, you know, and you need to be that person for your children. You know, uh, yes, you're filled with fear. Yes, you're filled with insecurity. Yes, you're filled with anxiety. Who isn't? There was a girl who fell off a train in, in, in Mumbai. And she lost both her legs. And she turned around and said, there's a reason I'm still alive. And you know what? I'm going to climb Mount Everest. And she did. Well, she you did? Know? Yes, she did. So my point is, it's all up here in your mind. Martina Navratilova, you know, was asked, how does she play such a great game in her 40s? And how, you know, you know, how is she so good and so agile? And she said, you know, the ball doesn't know how old I am. And she said, the game of life is not played on tennis courts or in your work environments or in your home or, you know, in your family life. No, the game of life is played in six inches, which is the wow. diff distance between your ears right here. This is yeah. where the game of life is played. Absolutely. All your thoughts, your anxieties, your insecurities, your fears, your self-doubt, your programming, social conditioning, everything is going on in here. This is where the game of life is played. Deprogram, wow. reprogram, reinvent. 
thoughts become things by action, action, action. <laughs> and that's yes. what Pooja has done for her life. And she's advising you that this is six inches, six inches, six inches, six inches, and everything is within six inches. It's up to you. A lot of other things as well, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh yeah. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> So uh, the beauty of Pooja is actually spreading the happiness and giving directions and giving some ideas to those women who are suffering. And she has actually given her journey of experience, which is an experiential learning. And I am sure that a lot of women are going to be learning from this today's program and they will become the fighters, the Sharonies of the world to build their life, to be someone, <laughs> someone like Pooja Bedi, who is a woman of substance. Niti, your next question, please, be fast. Yeah, sir. So now I'm sure audience would be keen to know about the other parts of your journey of excellence, ma'am, for being host of commercials such as Tips and Toes, Frotty, and the controversial Kama Sutra campaign. You also actively campaign for HIV AIDS through celebrity appearances, BBC, Devai and fundraising events, and also supported breast cancer awareness, street children, World Vision of India, and Habitat Humanity. Can you please share this part of personality, please, ma'am? As I said, it's about the elephant and the blind men who choose to see different parts <laughs> of that elephant. So, yeah. So, you know, yes, I think uh, giving back to society is something that has been very high on my priority and my parents as well. Um, you know, if you go to my grandparents' journey and how they were with the refugees and the camps that were set up and my grandmother's journey into Buddhism, there are three books written on my grandmother's incredible life story uh, by English authors. Um, my father has spent his own journey down in these books. I think um, my mother, through, you know, building a dance village in the middle of a barren piece of land out in the outskirts, you know, with no fear of the coits or snakes or, you know, any of that, um, you know, and I think, I think for me, the entire journey of, of giving back to society, I mean, the more, as I said, when your well is full, you can share with others, right? When you have courage, you can share that with others. When you have love in your heart, you can share that with others. When you have money in your pocket, you can share that with others. When you're a celebrity, you can share your status with others. You know, the, when your well is full, you can share from it. And I think to me, the most important part is sharing because people can look around and talk about, Are, this is the problem with the world. This is the problem with society. Are, there's so much poverty. Oh, there's so much corruption. Oh, there's so much. So what are you doing about it? Just talking is not going to change things. You know, how can we help shape that? If you don't like what you see, well, go ahead and make a difference. Every drop makes the ocean. You don't have to do things on a large scale. And Rome was not created in a day. But at the end of the day, you can do your bit. And when you do your bit, that person will go out and do their bit because you have empowered them to then empower others. It's a ripple effect that takes place. So don't you want to be that person that can help other people do things and change their lives so they can change their circle and their consciousness? And it's not just about Habitat for Humanity and giving homes to these, you know, to, uh, to the homeless, which has been a wonderful endeavor, which, you know, I've been a part of many Habitat for Humanity initiatives. And yes, we've done a lot for street children and for cancer and for HIV awareness and many, 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 many other causes along the course of time. But I think to me, what has been the most important is shaping mindsets, you know, because the people can only change their lives once they change the way they think. And that to me has been fundamental in my journey, no matter what, through my columns, through the way I speak up on national television, to the debates I do, to the, you know, the experiences I share through my platforms, through my empowerment programs, through forums like this. It's always about helping people be better and go from strength to strength by changing the way they think. Just a simple change in perspective makes such a difference in a life journey. And if somebody, I mean, I've been shaped by all the thoughts that have come my way. The books I've read, the people I've encountered, the courses I've done, they have shaped me to be who I am today. It didn't just come like this, right? So I want to be there to help people experience these things as well, because I believe that I can be part of that change, you know, and that I can, I can definitely change vast sections of people around me, especially given the fact that I have position, that I have a voice, that I have a platform, that I have a celebrity status. And it can be used for so much gain and benefit for so many people. Why would I not do it? 
Wow. Pooja, f- fascinating. Pooja, you, you are fascinating. And my next question now, <laughs> what next? Your journey is full of feelings. I also understand because we let the world know about it. Mm-hmm. You are the founder of Happy Souls. Mm-hmm. You are a partner of Magician of Wellness. Let the audience know about this part of this venturing. What all are you doing in this? Let the people know about it. Because there are many, many people from the corporate world who would like to utilize. You are such a powerful personality in terms for the human race. I comment that global talent company surely would take you on board for uh, some of the assignments within the country and globally. Similarly, let's share this. I want you to share what all you do so that the people know about your this beautiful venture of yours. All right. Well, I started Happy Soul, which was a workshop series that I conducted uh, after about 18 years of research in the world of quantum physics, Newtonian physics, alternative sciences, etc. Because I truly believe that the world beyond us is greater than just the form and life and, 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 and limitations that we think we possess as human beings. There are worlds beyond us. We are, you know, we are, um, we are energy in motion right? Um, And everything in our lives from what we choose to manifest, what we choose to block, you know, whether it is money, whether it is love, it is all done by us, right? We manifest, we block. That's step one. Step two is disease. We create our disease and therefore we can uncreate our disease. Now, what this is all about is explained in my workshops, right? So I started doing the series of workshops, uh, amalgamating uh, quantum physics with Newtonian physics, because a lot of times you go to Baba's and you go to all these people and they say, ye karo, ye karo, ho jayega. There has to be some logic and some scientific basis which explains why and how, and that is not just mumbo jumbo. So my, my years and decades of research has been exactly that, amalgamating quantum physics and Newtonian physics. So say, for example, I'll give you a brief idea um, so, um, the human body has about 37 trillion cells, okay? Um, each cell, when you open it up, is neutrons, protons, electrons, you know, and when you open it, it's nothing but a vibrating, pulsating energy wave, right? Each of these cells has a power of about 1.7 volts. You have about 70 trillion tons of electricity in your body, okay? Now, you say, oh, why am I not electrocuting things? Why am I not, you know, um, in the space? Well, because you're not activating it. When you do activate it, it's what's called chi and prana, okay? The Chinese call it chi and the Indians call it prana. It's your essential vital life force, right? There are Reiki masters who are capable of accessing so much within what you call consciousness and super consciousness and the world beyond us. I've had experience. I've never done a drug in my life. But when I've done these courses, Reiki, Usui Reiki, Kanona Reiki, Magnified Healing, Shamanism, Soul Temple, try and understand where I could amalgamate science and quantum science in, uh, you know, um, I- I- into the picture. It was fascinating, Mr. Bakshi, for me to understand how incredible the human being and the human mind is. And you know, when you look at the Louise Hay, for example, uh, you know, Louise Hay, who does the Heal Your Life books. And she talks about how every single disease is caused by a thought process, specific thought process. So issues with your shoulder are responsibility, right? Issues with your knees are ego and pride. Right? Diabetes, bitterness about life, feeling bitter about where things are. So, you know, you say we inherit a disease. You don't inherit a disease. You inherit the thought process rampant in your family, which creates a disease. Because you inherit a cynicism to the government, a cynicism to society, an attitude that they have, which your parents have, and you adopt those attitudes and belief systems. And therefore, you inherit the disease-causing mindset processes that set in and are chronic over time. So you create your disease, you uncreate your disease. And when people realize that and realize how powerful it is, when you realize that you have 70 trillion volts of electricity in your body, and when you look around you and you say, you know, you're surrounded by energy waves, um, uh, you know, um, maybe 500 TV channels, 30 radio channels. You can't pick it up, can you? But if you put a little set of box right there, suddenly it picks up everything that's around because it's tuned into those frequencies, right? Actually, it's all floating all around you. You don't have the ability or the consciousness to tune into it. The same way, there are many frequencies we can tune into. We choose to block ourselves because from childhood, you're told, Mat karo, pagal hai kya? You know, don't believe in this, don't believe in that. You see little children and they're kind of doing this in the air and they're playing with these imaginary things. That's because they haven't been told at that point of time that there aren't dimensions beyond them. 
you know and there is so much that actually takes place when you when you talk about manifestation for example what is manifestation thoughts of energy when you do brain mapping right you do brain mapping and the scientists are there saying think of something oh the creative brain logical brain this area is lighting up that area is lighting up etc what is it is electrical impulses right you think of something scary your heart starts racing dun, 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 you get scared right what is that it's recorded in an electrocardiogram machine right ecg electrocardiogram you're sending out electrical output with every electrical discharge there's a corresponding um, uh, magnetic field that is created that is science right that is science this is how you amalgamate science and quantum and, and 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 quantum physics so when you are sending out an electrical discharge there's a magnetic field created the greater the magnetic discharge the greater the electrical discharge the greater the magnetic field what is the magnetic field it is something that you are magnetizing so what are you magnetizing everything you send out has a specific frequency everything has a specific frequency the the the, the love has a specific frequency certain kinds of fear have a certain frequency um, every single frequency like those millions of channels because when you see a set of box not one minute of star sports appears in nickelodeon and not one minute of 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 of, of something else will appear on another channel it's seamlessly in data bits flying around seamlessly streamed into your mobile phone and you're watching it where is this seamless thing coming it's frequencies right so now when you have the fact that it is all frequency what you are sending out is a specific frequency which is why i tell everybody don't focus on your fears focus on your dreams because all the time you're thinking what if this happens what if that happens and you're focusing more on your fears and therefore you're attracting more of that into your life right so my workshop started with making people understand the power their personal power personal transformation and all of that i wanted to take my journey forward and to a bigger audience i started magicians of wellness which took wellness in a holistic sense so wellness isn't just about your physical wellness it is about your mental wellness your financial wellness your sexual wellness your emotional wellness your social wellness all of that constitutes holistic wellness how do i get people and empower people to be holistically well so i started magicians of wellness which is a very brick and mortar retail cafes spas wellness centers etc that whole journey has begun for me we started our first franchise in kanur you know we have launched in goa we are in a very good space with that merchants of wellness is my huge b to b to c uh resellers marketplace based on again health and wellness um and is multi vendor so we are encouraging grassroots artisans vendors from across the country whoever's in the world of wellness to come and sell on our platform we're encouraging housewives students entrepreneurs to come and resell those products on our website you know it's a massive tech venture which has a potential to be a unicorn venture uh, in like 3 to 4 years and it's launching next month you know so we're very 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 excited about all these different things happening within the world of wellness for us in the retail space in the i say brick and mortar space as well as the uh, e-commerce space now i split the companies up for valuation reasons um business brain still exists <laughs> and i've been thinking and e-commerce valuations are 12 times and you know brick and mortar ventures would be six times so magicians is my brick and mortar enterprise you know and my tech venture goes into a merchants of wellness so that's where i am right now with my uh, wellness projects and the reason i was busy uh, mr bakshi through the lockdown is because um, i was focusing on getting this venture up and running and there was no better time to get into health and wellness and there was no better time to launch e-commerce and i seem to have ridden that wave beautifully thanks to a lovely enable team that has supported me every step of the way uh, pooja you know uh, so much has changed last 15 years when we met bangkok and dubai today you know i see a women satguru on my <laughs> i don't have a beard <laughs> i didn't yeah. inherit that from my dad and and and, <laughs> people, and you are talking our language which we teach in classrooms yes. the leadership the manifestation the power of positivity uh niti varsha and harsh uh, we need to have an mou with uh, pooja's uh, <laughs> organization and we need to get her on board for our Uh, united nations un women uh, you know initial you know uh, global talent company does a lot of programs for un women usaid undp and uh, all united nations organizations across the world this is where we do the power of positivity road map to success one dream one team romancing with your destiny and i think we need to meet up i am back in india on 10th of january So in case you come to Delhi or I come to Mumbai or Goa, Goa I'll be late. But uh, I think we need to meet up and discuss this between us, and we can sign an MOU between Global Talent uh, and uh, your uh, organization. And I can see a lot of synergies between us. 
you are really a Sadhguru in women form. <laughs> because I know people <laughs> And so why do I have to be classified as a guru? Why is there a classification, the <laughs> mental blocks and these co constrictions that you're put into? Because, why? Because, you, know, you, know, you know, when Sadhguru talks, he talks a similar kind of stuff. And today when I was watching you, I, I think somebody wrote also, I think Anshu wrote also here, that she is Sadhguru of women. She is just <laughs> so people are getting crazy. Uh, uh, Niti. <laughs> I yes, think we'll have to move fast. Uh, quickly, uh, you have a quick question, then I, I have the last question. question. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're muted, you're muted, you're muted. You have to unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah. So uh, as everyone knows, ma'am, COVID, COVID, the destroyer of the world, you yourself got COVID recently, which we discussed, as I saw on the social media. I also understand that you played the great role during the COVID to help the human race. Please share with us what all you did during COVID, helping people to come out of this messy situation. Please, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> I think I got trolled a lot, and I got uh, I got um, uh, a lot of flack. I would say for my stand on being unvaccinated, and on the fact that I truly believe that you know. Um, for the fact that we had a 1% or 2% maximum fatality ratio that we shut down 100% of the world and deprived 98% of the planet uh, of livelihood, of income, of access to, you know, uh, to jobs and livelihoods, um, you know, or, or even, you know, infrastructure and facilities that could help them for their other diseases. Because at that point of time, you know, people just not allowed to go to the hospitals, they were made to COVID hospitals, a lot of people, other diseases weren't getting the treatment they deserved. So on multiple levels, I just felt um, that there was something almost about the way it was all playing out. Um, it didn't logically make sense to me, um, you know, as to why 100% of the population needs to be vaccinated, you know, when there's a 2% mortality rate, you know, 1% mortality rate. Um, so I chose to stay unvaccinated also because it's an under trial vaccine. So, you know, it's not, I mean, it's, I'm not against vaccine. Let's just put it this way. I've had my tetanus vaccines. We've had our MMR. I give my kids their vaccines. I'm not anti-vaccine. I'm anti under trial vaccines, okay? And I got a lot of flack for it, but that's okay. I'm used to getting flack for everything that I do generally in life, whether it's my Kama Sutra campaign, the later they'll turn around and say, very good, very good, very good. Standing up on my own two feet, you know, getting divorced, hurry, what are you doing? And they're like, very good, very good, very good. You know, so I mean, the same women, you know, who used to turn around and, you know, tell their daughters not to play with me when I was a kid because, you know, I was my mother's daughter and was little, you know, you should go play with girls who are from different households. That's a very modern household and, you know, that very bohemian and I had boyfriends and I had, I drank alcohol and I had boyfriends and I wore mini skirts, you know, and it was like play with the more you know, domesticated girls, you know, and at the same time, you know, those girls would come out and wear their long skirts and below their long skirts would be the mini skirts, you know, so, <laughs> you know, and now today I have all these mothers saying, you know, I want my daughter to be just like you. And I look at them and I'm like, I still drink, you know, I still wear mini skirts, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I still have a boyfriend, you know, so, <laughs> You know, but times change. The way people look at you changes, right? So, uh, you know, for me, um, you know, again, as far as COVID goes, to me, the whole challenge was not um, about COVID. It was about actually twofold. One is my journey as a health and wellness professional, where I truly believe prevention is better than cure, where I truly believe the focus should be on our immunity, because at some point, two vaccinations will wear down. The efficacy will wear down. If you two vaccinations, then you're going for a booster dose, then you go for another dose, then you go for another dose, then you go for another dose. And it's a given that you will just have to keep having doses because the virus keeps mutating, right? So for me, immunity is the most important thing. And I believe that all this time I've been taking my cardas, I've been getting exercise, getting sunshine, doing, I had taken my vitamin D, you know? And so when I got COVID, I was so happy in a sense to get it and get it over with because I said COVID is so infectious. It would be abnormal not to get it, right? So you will get COVID. The question is how quickly do you recover from COVID? How does your body react and respond and get rid of the virus? Uh, you know, when you have COVID. So to me, that was my challenge. So when I got COVID, I, I put a thing out on Twitter saying, oh, I got COVID. And well, it's pretty <laughs> bad. You know, I was like flat out of sleeping 22 hours out of 24 hours, just knocked out. And, you know, that continued my cardas and my porridges and all the things I was, you know, having my vitamin C and 
all of that. And, uh, you know, and, and uh, in seven days, I put another video up saying, I'm fine. And, you know, very happy. And they were like, how the hell are you so fine in seven days? <laughs> what happened? What magic pill are you taking that you're so fine and bouncing around your short time? I'm okay, you know. And uh, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, you have to walk the talk. And at the end of the day, you have to be, you know, you can't tell people about something until you've actually experienced it yourself. Be it single parenting, be it divorce, be it you know, being on, you know, without money, getting up on your own two feet, handling criticism. You know, I've been through the gamut. You know, so when I speak to people, I speak from experience. And, you know, and, and, and so to me, firstly, there was the immunity aspect of it. And secondly, was not COVID itself, but the side effects of COVID, which were mental depression, you know, emotional depression, financial loss. These things had hit people far greater than COVID had. People got COVID, people got it over and done with, right? So they were left, you know, holding on to serious amounts of, of, of financial issues, emotional issues, mental issues, uh, depression, and or, you know, staying in loveless marriages and stuck together, women who were abused in their homes being subjected to that on a daily basis with no recourse, you know, to step out. So to me, it was about helping people through that time in different ways. The courses I did, the way I reached out with different programs to help empower people mentally, to give them strength, to give them um, hope, to give them positivity, to infuse their lives with, you know, with, 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 with a purpose, with vision, with what now, what beyond. And how, as I said, you can't stop what happens to you, but you can <laughs> certainly determine how you respond to what happens to you. Yeah, right? how you so, respond. So that, was, that, so, so, so that was that was to me very important in my COVID venture, so to speak. Yeah. It wasn't about saving people from COVID. It's not like I went to any camps and I did any social work in camps. No, but I certainly worked very hard at changing people's mindset, helping them evolve, helping them be stronger, helping them be happier. And of course, um, you know, um, being very clear that I was not going to be vaccinated and to a certain line that may seem politically incorrect, but it's way, well within my democratic rights not to do so. Yeah. Fantastic. Some people are saying, Gosh, Niti is saying, Gosh, never heard somebody talking so happily about disease, especially COVID. <laughs> Such a fun she is. God bless her. And there are people, Vivek Harkoli remembers you in uh, Dubai. Vivek was part of our team and he was watching you in Dubai. And I, of course in Bangkok as well. And we got uh, Mr. Seigel, the president of India Thai Chamber of Commerce, saying, Hi, we need to get her to Bangkok again. <laughs> I'm unvaccinated, yeah. I can't travel. <laughs> Sorry? I said, I'm unvaccinated, I can't travel. Oh, okay. oh, you have to get vaccinated. Without that, you cannot travel. Now, my last question, my last question. Now, Pooja, uh, you have seen what all we have done last two years. Hashtag Women Power, a global movement. 23 chapters around the world. 720,000 women on this platform. 1 million women to be on this platform by 2024, but we'll be there, there before that. We are launching Women Power Song. And we are, I am writing a book, uh, which will be released on 7th March. 8th March is the International Women Day. Uh, and 7th of March, along with Dr. Kiran Bedi at India Habitat Center, we'll be launching the book and it's going to be an event and where I would we certainly send you an invitation to be part of the panelists. And hopefully Samriti Irani is going to be joining us. Now, all that is happening under this hashtag women power, a global moment, me being an honorable woman in this process. I would like to know from you, what is women empowerment for you? Second, how will you contribute to our moment? A um, couple of things. Uh, women empowerment to me is two things. Women empowerment to me, of course, is raising the status of women through, you know, um, education, through our laws, through literacy, awareness, you know, opportunities. That's a given. That's part of what women empowerment is and, you know, should be. The other aspect of women empowerment is to tell women that it is not important to compete with a man, that we have great and enormous strength in our femininity. Being a woman is our strength. It is an asset. And male bashing is not women empowerment. A lot of women feel that we're putting men down. They're putting the status of women up. That is not the case, you know. And most importantly, these laws that have been formulated to help women, um, well, laws that, you know, women like my grandmother, my mother, me, you know, my, my strong daughter, Alaya today, you know, we herald the, the, the role of the, of the modern Indian empowered women you know, we fight for laws that help women who are, you know, um, uh, marginalized or women that are abused, etc. The number of women misusing these laws is catastrophical. 
And that is something I feel we should take forward as a really serious burning issue because we fought hard as women for women to empower women, not to disempower men, not to blackmail men and torment men and their families. As a I love your statement. As a man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious, Mr. Bakshi. We have to coexist on this beautiful planet. And, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you know what? Men have ruled the roost for so many years okay. and oppressed women for so many years. So what if women give it back to men? My point is, you know, there's, these are innocent men, you know, and if you didn't like what was done to you, why would you do it to somebody else? You know, and, and, you know, and it doesn't matter what happened in the past. What matters is what we do today that shapes a generation forward, you know, and all these women who yeah. are going around there misusing these laws are creating a gener generation of very dysfunctional men that are, that are, that are not just wary of women, but disrespect women and almost, you know, uh, are anti-women uh, for doing and, and, and putting themselves and their families, you know, suddenly, you know, when you have a fake rape case put on a man, like happened to my friend, Karen Oberoi, you know, you are suddenly a rapist. You're the mother of a rapist or sister of a rapist or a friend of a rapist, or, you know, you lose your job opportunities, you lose all of that. That is so unfortunate, you know, that that could, that, that would ever be the case, you know? So I think for me, women empowerment is about, is about respecting your role in society, respecting the laws that were meant to protect you, empowering yourself and empowering other people. And most important, not competing with a man, just being a better woman than you were the day before. Wow. Wow. In fact, uh, some of the men are liking your statement. Tyagarajan, what is the great statement of men? And Tyagarajan is the is the vice president of Hyderabad Management. He is in New Jersey. He says, "Kya baat hai, Pooja? What a super explanation!" Okay. And, Thank you. Uh, and, so now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a couple of questions. In the meanwhile, have, uh, uh, this uh, Varsha is not there. I think Amrish is there today. Amrish, please ask Anshul, uh, chapter head Mumbai, Women Power to join, and chapter head, uh, uh, you know, uh, Bangkok, Manisha Bose to join for the vote of thanks. And I'm taking some quick questions in the meanwhile. There's a question coming to you. And this is from Vinay. Yes, both of yeah, yes, both sir, of both both of them, Manisha Bose from Bangkok, and uh, you know this. In the meanwhile, um, I have a question. What are the negatives and positives in Indian girls' life? Is one of the questions which is coming. What are the negatives and positives in the Indian girls' life? Yeah. Uh, a question. Well, and in the meanwhile, in the meanwhile, in case you remember my wife. She oh, hello! Hi. <laughs> she is my women power at home. How are you? <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm, she remembers I'm, you. <laughs> I was listening each and every word of yours. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoy that. You know, yeah, I enjoy speaking, I so it's nice when people enjoy, enjoy listening. <laughs> I always enjoy. Thank you. Yeah, put their screen on and tell me your response to this question. Yes, yes. I'm sure. I'm, uh, yes. So, so I would say the positives of being a girl today is the fact that. Um, through the generations, every generation has empowered the next generation, right? Otherwise, we would still be in our, you know, uh, face covered and, you know, uh, traditional attire. The fact is every generation has moved beyond parda, you know, has moved beyond covering the head, has moved beyond, you know, the robes and the garbs, basically, has moved beyond telling the girl she cannot be educated, has moved beyond telling a girl that she her role is only in the kitchen and to serve the man. We moved beyond the fact that women were not, uh, you know, supposed to work in professions apart from maybe being a teacher or maybe, being, you know, that sort of space. You know, so the, the opportunities are equal today for women in a workplace. That is a great plus point for uh, women today. Um, the fact that the laws out there are in place, uh, even posh, for example, in the workplace for women, uh, the laws on the street, uh, you know, as far as civil laws go and, and, and other laws go that have been created and formulated very stringently, again, to protect women and empower them. Squads like the Goa Police Force has started, the Pink Force, which I was talking about earlier, you know, an entire squad devoted and dedicated to women's, uh, you know, empowerment and safety. Um, you know, so I think a lot has happened in this lifetime, in this generation. Uh, which has really empowered women to lead life on their own terms. I mean, to live in with a person who's considered taboo. Um, 
to um, to have premarital sex at one point of time was considered taboo. You know, today uh, you know it's okay to have a boyfriend. It's okay to have premarital sex. It's okay to live in and try a relationship before you get married. And certain sections of society may still not be okay with it, but they're growing and it's changing dramatically over time. So, um, so firstly, we have to thank the generations prior for being where we are today because they have fought hard and fought very big battles uh, to empower the generations of today to be able to wear mini skirt or be able to wear bikini or to be able to work in a or to go to a bar and sit down and have a drink you know just like anybody else because they want to um i think the negatives for women today is still largely associated with sexuality uh the fact that women aren't made to feel comfortable about being sexual beings that if a man and a woman have a relationship the woman is used and the man is the culprit you know, when actually in actuality, say a woman would enjoy sex as much as a man would in a relationship, yeah. you know, mm. but she's made to feel like a bichari, you know, social condition that comes into the picture, Hi, tere kitne boyfriends they, you know, and <laughs> I think, I think, I think that still plays a role. I mean, the fact that she can have those boyfriends is great as a strength today. The fact that she still looked at like, oh, so many boyfriends, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> why not? At least you know what you don't want, you know, so, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, equal opportunity for both. So I think uh, the mindsets are the only thing that really limit today's generation uh you know uh, again the sense of victimhood societal conditioning the need to deprogram reprogram reinvent as we say um those are the factors that still exist today so i think i think it's a journey of the indian woman that has gone from strength to strength in every possible way you know she leads her life the way she wants she has friends she has outings she has a party she has a girly nights out she has a girly holidays um you know she's educated she has job opportunities what she does with all of that that is her choosing yeah, another question has come here. Do all Bollywood actresses need to agree to what Karan Johar, this controversial wants? <laughs> you know, firstly, I don't like the thing of clubbing everybody as one thing. You know, somebody gets caught some drugs, all of Bollywood does drugs. You know, it's all of Bollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, we're all people. Everyone's an individual. You know, you can't club a whole fraternity and make everything one. You know, everybody has an individual journey. Everybody has their own belief systems. Everybody has their own uh, preferences, their own way of life, their own uh, dignity, their own moral standards, you know, which are very subjective, I must say. But at the end of the day, each person's journey is unique. To think that everybody thinks the same way because either they're in the same business or the same industry or the same friends group also for that matter is ridiculous. You know, because, you know, the best kind of friends are those who tell you you're wrong, not the ones who say, yes, 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 you're right. You know, the true friends you actually want around you, those will give you a reality check from time to time, you know, and tell you where you're completely off and completely wrong. I mean, you know, I mean, I told my friend Sonia when we were younger, I said, if you ever turn into those mother-in-laws, you know, in our life, you ever turn to the mother-in-laws and other cha 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 mother-in-laws you see in the series, you and me will promise that we will slap each other. You know, so you're becoming that mother-in-law, which is in the series. <laughs> you know, so it's about how we choose to, you know, fall into situations because it's kind of conditioned that this is how it should be you know okay. or you free your mind you know so i mean i've had uh, stepmothers who i've adored you know, normally say are evil stepmother and oh my god i hate you know uh, this woman who's coming to my father's life and this i've had such amazing relationships with susan and with nikki and you know it's just been such an amazing um journey to be so liberated that we could you know my father would say that more to love and to be loved by no one's a threat. I could never occupy that space in her life, right? So what is it to me? It's one more person to love and one more person to be loved by. And that is so brilliant. You know, when you open your mind, you open your life to infinite possibilities for more wonderful things to flow into your life. Wow. Vinay Sachidev ji, thank you so much. Our vice president of India Thai Business Association from Bangkok. He says, what an impressive Pooja baby. Fantastic. <laughs> I have many questions, but I think with the time in hand, I will not be able to take more questions at this point of time, but I have uh, uh, Anshul Sharma, she is the Mumbai chapter head of Women Power, and Dr. Manisha Bose, she is the Women chapter head from Bangkok, both of them, one by one, quick vote of yeah. thanks. Thank you, thank you so much, and Pooja, uh, my honest feelings, see so far what, as you mentioned about your, uh, you know, in the initial uh, discussion that we always look uh, from, you know, the elephant stories, uh, perception for anyone, and yes, you are very right in that, and because... Uh, Personally, see, I follow newspaper a lot and your whenever your column comes. So, you know, a thought always used to come to my mind. 
एडिट करा लिया होगा किसी ने लिख दिया होगा बट वेन आई एम वॉचिंग यू लाइव नाउ टूडे सो इट इज अमेजिंग अमेजिंग रियली अमेजिंग एंड आई गॉट थ्रिल्ड आई एम गेटिंग गूस बम्स यू नो वाइल से because the kind of knowledge you have shared so far like uh, as an indian uh, common people we always used to think that these bollywood artists or people coming from that side artists they do not have knowledge but listening to you it is such a sadguru uh, sadguru yeah yeah i named See, you lady I, sadguru I, I, i i've i've had deprogram her good she her program of bollywood is a certain way that has been deprogrammed now <laughs> actually actually you have done that and uh, puja she like uh, i reside in mumbai and would certainly would love to meet you if you allow and uh, we will be having this hashtag women power program in april uh, month in navi mumbai and i i am inviting you now so please be there and uh, <laughs> let us remain connected and yes uh, one thing i would like to share when uh, you became you know 18 it was you got a uh, maruti car gifted by uh, kabir sir and it was in a when was when was 21 21 okay so yeah. i the year uh, year is missing so 21 and it was the you know headline of the newspaper times of <laughs> india yeah and i remember either it was a gray a silver color or it silver. was silver silver color, silver, right? silver. So. yeah yeah silver <laughs> and, oh wow <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so it was a you know story uh, in the uh, national newspaper and now uh, my question is like uh, you are a columnist with the same newspaper and you do uh, so many uh, you know insightful uh, you share your thoughts about uh, relationships mainly maybe because uh, whatever you have gone through has given you so much of experience so what difference you feel in uh, 21 years of pooja i don't know whether alaya is 21 or not but uh, is 24 24 okay so and uh, 21 years of alaya because your uh, brought up is uh, almost same i would say the uh, yeah. kind of uh, open mindedness and uh, the kind of luxuries uh, you might have gone through the kind of ups and downs you have gone through so what difference you feel in uh, those uh, days 21 years old girl and today's uh, girl and what you know in, 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 in like my in my in my family life i would say that um, the way i chose to live my life and the way alaya chooses to live her life is almost equal because we had full freedom and full decisions to make and we were always told you are responsible for your decisions you are entitled you can come to us as parents we will tell you that this will lead to situation a b or c it is our job to to educate you and to guide you now you decide to walk a path whatever decision you take right be prepared to bear the consequences of that decision and take responsibility for it you can't do something say oh mummy help me right because you made that decision knowingly and you're an educated girl who's you know uh, smart and bright and you know you know what you're doing and yes you know you will make mistakes but that's how you learn so i think the same with my daughter i was told from childhood we'll always have food to eat a roof over your head and you want your luxuries you go and you earn them i said the same thing to my children as well you know while they were growing up as usual there was love hugs kisses attention holidays presents you know good education food to eat roof over your head and when they reached a certain age it was like want your luxuries you go buy it you go earn it and my daughter has through lockdown worked and worked and worked on her social media and brand endorsements and done all of that and she earned herself her car during lockdown you know that is huge and the car of her dreams not just a car right she wanted to be an actor she worked morning to night 6 am to 2 am hard on her classes to give it her 100% the same way my mother said give it a 100% she has done the same thing she has given it her 100% and it shows she won the film fair award for her debut you know that's ah. huge i didn't even know about it you know yeah. she said i say wake up in the morning i see a photograph of her holding it say hi mama guess what i won the film fair award i said excuse, excuse me what you know <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know the film fair awards were happening you know here in goa in my life you know and um, you know and of course i took the next flight back to bombay and i ran into her room and i hugged her and i burst into tears and what kind of mother am i i didn't even <laughs> know this and, you know and uh, all of that but you know having said that i think you know both alaya and me have mothers uh, who were fiercely independent 
who chose to live life on their terms. Um, you know, um, like me and like Alaya, we were both daughters who chose to exhibit our independent streak to make our own choices to live life the way we chose to live, live our lives. And I think um, it's just been a journey of strength to strength. So, um, you know, in every possible way, my, my commitment has always been to shape them to good human beings. You know, uh, it doesn't matter what their professional journey is. You know, it's been very important to me to make sure that they have integrity, that they have compassion, that they have kindness, that they have gratitude. You know, these are very important qualities for me to instill in my son and my daughter. You know, um, I have to put good human beings on this planet. You know, what they do financially for themselves, that's secondary. That's not the reason they're on this planet. Beautiful. Pooja. So, so, Pooja, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Anshul and um, daughter Manisha Bose. Okay. Uh, hi, Pooja, and hi, everyone. From Bangkok. She is the chapter head for Bangkok. Hello. Anyhow. Hello. Pooja, needless to say, how mesmerized everyone is listening Actually. to you. Actually, you know, I need yes. not compliment more. But you know, Pooja, I've seen you. I'm from Mumbai and I have seen you many times at the airport. And you, even when we were all younger, you just look the same. Oh. And you know, it is not just about how you maintained yourself physically. You don't look your age. I see an immense spiritual growth in you. You know, the way you speak about self-worth, self-love, which is so spiritual. And you talk about gratitude and not living in victimhood. If you know you are so full, that is why you can guide everyone. And you like Deepa Bhakshi. Yeah. Oh, also, I was like, <laughs> while your dad, your dad was the man crush and he is man crush of Mr. DK Bakshi. For me, there were two baby women when I was growing up, which my mother would always talk about. One was uh, your mom. And one was Kiran Bedi. My mom always used to mention that, you know, she started her dancing career at the age of 26. So it's never too late for anyone. <coughs> True. I'm surprised that Pooja danced so beautifully. And I was very surprised when people asked her questions that, oh, when did you learn dance? I mean, it's in her blood. She is Pratima Bedi's daughter. And when I went to Pune, uh, when I went to Bangalore the first time 12 years ago, I went to Nityagram and I would, you know, imagine where how your mother would have danced and so beautifully what she has created so your mother also influenced housewives then you know by doing what she did now when everybody's calling her Sadhguru and she's uh, denying it I would like to tell her she was born Sadhguru now I'll tell you why Pooja had done an ad condom ad okay and I was listening to her interview then she uh, she was, you know, there was, she was not apologetic about doing it. And she was uh, telling the journalist was, you know, asking her mean questions. And she stood up there and she said that, look, I'm not selling liquor. I'm not selling cigarettes. I am selling condoms. I am teaching people to have safe sex. What a statement in those times. And I used to never be impressed by movie actresses, but she was one actress that wow. time. You know, where she knew what she was talking as a young girl, I could see that fire in her. And today it was such a pleasure to see the same fire that it has not gone down. <laughs> that know, she, so does not, she doesn't want to be called a Sadhguru, but I think she's a born Sadhguru. You know, she was very young that time and I was also, I mean, just two, three years younger than her. So I, we were all young and for that time to stand up and say, and it is so true. Today, we talk about sex education. Women have protested and said, please, you know, teach us children sex education. And there this girl was that time talking about it and very boldly saying, I'm doing nothing wrong. I'm just teaching, especially at India Safe Sex. So uh, it was amazing. And you, you saw people are going crazy about this. And it was, thank you, Mr. Bakshi for getting <coughs> And it is it was amazing. We will all watch it again and keep up the good work. You're working you. with mental health. You're working with these issues from young adults to people our age group. They're all going through it. I'm a lecturer and I, you know, see my 20 students who are in 20s, 30s going through the same thing. So you're doing amazing. And anytime you want to connect with any of the women power, we are we will be we will love to have you, you know, whenever we can have you. Thank you so much. Bangkok, Bangkok, so Bangkok, Bangkok invite, Bangkok, Bangkok invite. Yes, I, I leave that invite to you. I'm just so happy to hear her today. So I'm just enjoying what she said. <laughs> Thank you. So invite her to Bangkok. Bangkok. <laughs> yeah, Hug you back. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Pooja, yes. Pooja, 
200. Okay, so Ipuja, instead of inviting you, I just give this responsibility to Mr. DK. <coughs> yeah, yeah, he's happen. brilliant. He's brilliant at tracking so me down. So he I just keeps messaging me. Pooja, Pooja, this is Pooja. Come on, I'm like, yes, Mr. Bakshi, I'm believing that Milly. Pooja, Pooja, yes, yes, Mr. Bakshi, yes. He just didn't let go. He was like, no, Pooja, no, hold I'm, on. Uh, Pooja, one more compliment I will give you. Your daughter is so well spoken. You Thank know, you. I don't watch movies, but Sarah and your daughter. You know, I love to hear them talk. And when her daughter speaks, I remember that interview, you know, where Pooja would talk and fluently, confidently, she knew her content, she knew her manner and your matter, and you're still the same. So <laughs> it's just so amazing. Be, be the Pooja, same. You won't believe Pooja in 250 webinars, Usha has never joined. It is the first time. First time. She joined here you. to be with me because of Pooja Bedi. First of all, congratulations to both of you for becoming, uh, you know, in-laws. Yeah. Congratulations to Shivin and... Uh, yeah, we had a great wedding, yeah. yeah. Okay, and uh, before we close, Vivek Harkoli is keen to raise his question, and then we close. Vivek, please go ahead. See, Can we see you, Vivek? No, Pooja, uh, good evening to you. Hi, good evening, Vivek. How are you? Uh, very well, thank you. Uh, your entire family and you and your daughter have had what I would call a wow journey, a wow journey in the life. I have two questions, very short. You are a legend. What is it that you would like, what legacy would you like to leave at the end of your journey? That's the first question. Second, in case you were to be born again, would you like, live, like to live the same life or two things that you would like to change in this world so as to make your life Two times wow. <laughs> okay. Pooja, 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 before Vivek Harkoli was our director of marketing, taking mm -hmm. care of North America as well as Europe. Okay. And in the process, when you were, you came to us in Dubai as well as in Bangkok, he has watched his wife. They are like a family with us. And he's back in India now in Gurgaon. Yeah, he is a very close family. By the way, your father and my brother in law. I think they were classmates in St. Stephen's. Oh, uh, nice. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes, go okay. Ahead, okay, so, you know, um, when I was growing up, and obviously you have a lot of friends around you who are conservatives, and at some point of time, you know, they would say, oh, you know, don't do this and don't do that and don't be like this and, you know, toe the line and, you know, what will people say? Lok kya kahenge? That was a big thing back in those days. So I told my mother once, so she, she's street naked. So what will people say, mama, you know, when you dress like this? And all. She said, who people? I said, you know, people. Like, what will people say? So she, I was going to be very small. I said, yeah, people like who? I said, mama, people. And she said, oh, you mean Ramu, Shamu, Papu, Ramesh, Suresh, Naresh, you know, people? She said, yes. darling, look at Mahatma Gandhi and look at Mother Teresa. They have devoted their lives to humanity and the nation. Mm -hmm. How often do you remember them and say thank you? Do they remember? Yeah. How often do you remember them and say thank you? If I live my entire life based on what people will think or the legacy I'm leaving behind or what is happening, forget it. You will be forgotten no matter what. <laughs> Enjoy your journey. It doesn't matter what you leave behind. What matters is how you have fulfilled your time on this planet Earth. How many lives have you touched? How much joy have you spread? How have you dealt with your human experiences? How have you savored every minute of being on this beautiful planet? You're so fortunate that in this lifetime, you were born. I was born in a situation where I have a lovely family and I have a lovely home. I could have been a crippled beggar in some corner, you know, of a village looking for my next, you know, injection or my next meal. You know, I'm so lucky to have this life today. If I'm not waking up thankful and grateful to be on this planet, given the form I have, if I'm only grumbling and moaning and ye nahi hua and wo nahi hua and ye kaise hua and kyun nahi hua and, you know, how sad. What a wasted opportunity of a beautiful life. I don't see what legacy I'm going to live behind. I'm going to see how I thank the universe for everything that has been presented to me as an opportunity every single moment of my day. You know, that I wake up in the morning and I'm alive and I have another beautiful day to explore this planet or people or relationships or further my passion or my vision or my dreams. 
right? That is important to me, you know. That's and a fantastic response. Uh, I have never heard this kind of response where somebody doesn't care what my legacy is. I mean, <laughs> I want to enjoy life as I am. <laughs> Yeah, you Very know, and, and, and what I'm born as next, who can tell, you know, when you do these journeys of the soul and you do all these different courses like I've done, you realize that there's something way beyond. It's called soul groups. And you come down in soul groups and you go up there into higher consciousness. And when you go up there into higher consciousness and you make a conscious decision to come down on this planet, you have chosen to come onto this planet to exhibit that specific role. Your greatest tormentor, for example, is your greatest teacher right? Some people have been put in your life to put you through hardship so that you can become the best version of yourself. And you may hate that person for what they've done to you. But at the end of the day, they made you the strong person you are today. So thank them. You know, ah. they had and how sad for them that they had to come and play that role in your life. You know, I had to be a brutal person or a mean person. How sad that they agreed to play that role so that you could become the best version of yourself. So tomorrow, if I'm in the role of a tormentor also, I will not grudge it because I was meant to play that role for whatever reason. You know, um, I just want to enjoy the journey here while I know it and as I have it. You know, and wherever I come next time, so be it. I will enjoy that journey too. Wow. You know? Great. <laughs> I, have, Bakiji, I have never heard this kind of response in whatever 50 or 100 uh, of your uh, program. This is a great and entirely different response. And I love That's it. Guru. And I respect it. That's very interesting. Vivek, you can see Usha first time joining. You can I know see I, 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 I wanted to ask, who is this uh, beautiful lady next to you? <laughs> that is my that is my real women power at home. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> all the best. All the best, Pooja. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen around the world, whosoever is watching it now or who are going to be watching it, what a passionate journey of excellence of one and only Pooja Bedi. Pooja Bedi, the power of positivity, <laughs> the power of perseverance, the power of passion, the romance of destiny. And... We have had a very great discussion this evening uh, and she gave her experiential learning. I must thank Niti for co-hosting with me. Niti, it's share my with pleasure, me. sir, please. <laughs> and I must thank uh, Anshul, Mumbai chapter head, to be there always. for the vote of thanks. Always, and always there. Thank you, Abos from uh, Bangkok to be there for vote of thanks. And I must thank Pooja, from the core of my heart, yes. Pooja is from all of our heart, Pooja. Yeah, thank, thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. Actually, yeah. thank you. It's, oh, yeah. Today's session is an eye opener one. I, let me tell yes. you. Absolutely, absolutely. Pooja, I love keep you. Keep up the good work, Pooja, and all the thank best. You. We are thank all you. with you. More power to you. Thank more you. power to her and more power to honorable woman also. Yes. DJ okay. <laughs> <laughs> He, he snatches the power, so we don't tell you more power to you. you <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, first of all, a uh, couple of things. Number one, uh, uh, Niti, uh, Harsh, and uh, Varsha, please ensure that we are getting into the uh, MOU signing between Global Talent and <laughs> Japanese organization on the United Nations front, on the leadership and wellness programs we need to do. Second, Pooja Bedi is going to connect me with my <laughs> darling Kabir Bedi Sahab for hashtag new DNA of leadership. Third one, uh, she is going to be part of us at the main event in Delhi, which is going to be on 7th of March along with Kiran Bedi, and she will be part of her, and invitation has to go to her. And of course, in Mumbai also, Anshul yes. will be connecting with her and taking for her. We will not leave you Pooja Bedi now. I can see that. <laughs> yes. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff going on. And last one year, I have been struggling to get that. And she was always avoiding. I said, Pooja, I'm I'm like, I'll talk about things. I'm Pooja. ready to talk about things. And Mr. Bakshi, I'm busy yeah. with my Pooja magicians Shiv and my merchants Pooja and my happy Shivani souls. I said Shivani has come, Kiran Bedi has come, Malni has come, Palvi Joshi has come, Finaz Masani has come, uh, Shazia Alimi has come. You tell me these are the names and you still do not want to come on my show and you know me, how mad I am for work. And finally she is here. Ladies and gentlemen around the world, wishing you, this is our last program, Hashtag Dream and Power of 2021. We are now getting into 2022, one of the powerful years for all of us in the human race. Anywhere in the world, 
I am wishing all the human race, irrespective of caste, creed, gender, nationality, religion, and color, a powerful 2022. Let this COVID be over and let's be hugging each other, loving each other, one love, one human race, and one power of women power. Without women, men are nothing. We need women, mom, sisters, your partners, your colleagues, everywhere. Without women, this world will not take the generations forward. And I salute you. And I want to give you, Pooja, a standing ovation. And let's give a standing <laughs> ovation. To you. Mr. Bakshi, we can't do without the men either. I mean, the fathers, the sons, the brothers, the colleagues. <laughs> you know, we have to coexist on this planet. And I think the yeah, most we... important part is you do it with great dignity. The idea is to collaborate, to communicate, to help each other grow and nurture the journey forward. So, you know, uh, is, so thank you is... for being a man and thank you for be heading this women empowerment space. It's wonderful. And I have to go. I have a staff. Uh, okay. We are, the producer. we are the producers and directors of new generations. That's in Japan of Eva, I wish you Happy New Year. Thank you so yeah, Merry much. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, ma'am. Thank you. The very same to all of you. And I wish Thank you, you all for very, very so much of energy, Pooja. It is really <laughs> an amazing show we had today. And uh, we are, uh, like as uh, Mr. Bakshi also mentioned, that this is the last show of this year. And uh, we are closing on a very, very, very higher note. And uh, certainly next year, we are going to enter with the more, uh, you know, energetic shows. So thank you so much, Pooja, being here on this show. And uh, we'll stay connected. And now we are just like our uh, honorable women. We are after you. And we are not going to leave you like this. Thank you. <laughs> all the best. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Thank Christmas you. and New Year. Yeah, you happy too. Christmas and happy New Year. Stay Bye. blessed, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Pooja. Good luck. Thank bye. you, Pooja. Good bye. luck. Bye. Okay. We log off. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. 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 Fantastic. Fantastic. So ne next session, sir, bring uh, your new, you know, new women power in your family. Bring her yeah. also to the show. Yes, yeah, sure. Today so, I, Surbhi, I think Surbi is her name, right? Uh, Surbi. 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 Yeah. yeah, sure. We'll get her. Yeah, okay. Congratulations again. Yeah, bye bye, so Usha ma'am. Thank, thank you. Thank okay. you so much. Anytime, yeah. Okay, bye-bye.